Hey, PCALC, this is day two of doing uh, trig proof and solving trig equations. Uh, we're going to the document that I had from pre-calc last year that pretty much encapsulated the entire uh, chapter that did trig proof and, and uh, solving equations. We're clearly not going to do this whole thing together, uh, but I did pick a few where it's like, I don't think I really covered that the other day, or I want to make sure that we have a total understanding of what's going on for specific problems. So the first one I'm going to start with is one more where you had to deal with all solutions. So on number three, you've got two sine squared of x equals one, and you're supposed to solve it with all solutions, not just the ones between zero and two pi. So the first thing we're going to do is divide by 2 and then square root it. <clears throat> Keep in mind that when you square root both sides with a variable quantity, you need to put a plus or minus if there's a potential for negatives underneath the root. Uh, this is going to be root 1 over root 2, which is 1 over root 2 which is root 2 over 2. Hopefully this jumps out at you guys as a unit circle value. This was the one that occurred when you had 45 degree angles. Those were the pi over 4 values. Okay, So if you remember, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4 were the four 45 degree angles uh, that exist in the unit circle. Now, when it says all solutions, it means that pi over 2 works, and so does pi, I'm sorry, pi over 4 works, and so does pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So if I add 2 pi n to all of these, I get all the solutions possible. What if, though, I found a pattern that simplifies these four statements into something that's not four statements? For instance, the distance from here to here is 90 degrees, which is the same distance from here to here, also 90 degrees, and here to here, also 90 degrees, and here to here. That means I could start with pi over 4, and if I add pi over 4, I'm sorry, not pi over 4, two of those, 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2, I get 3 pi over 4. And if I add pi over 2 again, I get 5 pi over 4. And again, I get 7 pi over 4. And again, I get 9 pi over 4, which basically is the same thing as pi over 4. What I'm saying is that all four of these solution sets can be encapsulated in the statement pi over 4 plus pi over 2n, multiples of pi over 2. So here's 1 pi over 2, here's 2 pi over 2, here's 3 pi over 2, here's 4 pi over 2. Multiples of pi over 2 make it happen. All right, so hopefully that was clarifying. Let's do number 5 now. So one of our go-to strategies was turning everything into sines and cosines. But we really didn't do it on many examples from the, from the textbook. So I thought this example would be a perfect candidate to show you guys. If you turn these into sine and cosines, things jump out at you right away. Like the fact that you have two fractions now in which the denominator is already common. So you can combine those two. And 
And then it would make sense to move this sine of x to the other side through multiplication. So if I multiply the left by sine and the right by sine, uh, multiplying by sine cancels it out on the, on the left and creates it on the right. By the way, we should be thinking to ourselves right away that if you cancel the domain issue that originally existed in the first statement, you should be thinking wherever sine equals zero, if I get that as a solution, it actually doesn't work because I took, I, I can't divide by zero in this problem. It won't check out if you plugged it back in in the end. So extraneous solution alert. When you get to this point, there's only really one thing you can do to kind of move forward. You can square both sides. Squaring both sides is a legitimate strategy because it creates pi identities, which may move you closer towards solving this thing. Make sure you, you don't just call this 1 minus cosine squared. All right, It's actually 1 minus cosine of x times 1 minus cosine of x. When you expand that whole thing out, you end up getting 1 minus 2 cosine of x plus cosine squared on the left-hand side, sine squared of x on the right-hand side. And it's worth noting that squaring both sides is also an extraneous solution alert. Because, uh, again, uh, a squared, a lot of times it shows up with square roots, right? Here's what a square root function looks like. Here's what a parabola function looks like. You can almost see the fact that they're almost doubling one of the parts to give more solutions that really shouldn't exist there from the beginning. So there's a lot to keep in mind when it comes to like fake solutions. Here though, uh, yeah, we got pi identities now. The question is, would it make more sense to turn cosine squared into one minus sine squared or turn sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. Well, since we got a cosine here and a cosine squared over here, seems like it's a cosine party. Let's move the sine squared. Or not move it, but change it. And this is super helpful. The ones are going to cancel on both the left and the right. And you can move the cosine squared on the right to merge with the cosine squared on the left. Giving you 2 cosine squared x minus 2 cosine of x, which equals 0. <clears throat> now at this point, you should be thinking, they share a 2. They share a cosine of x. Let's factor, which is what we're going to do. So you're going to factor out a 2 cosine of x, which looks like this. We're running out of room, so I'm going to move over here. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Two cosine of x multiplied by, this is down to just cosine of x. Can you guys see all that? Good. <clears throat> and then these cosines can't, oh, the whole thing cancels. But there's still a one placeholder left over. All right, set two cosine of x equal to zero. Set cosine minus one equal to zero. Divide both sides by two. Add one to both sides. So now find the places on the unit circle between 0 and 2 pi where cosine of x equals 0. Well, these are the places where the x value is 0. So that would be here and here, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Where are the places where the cosine of x equals 1? Well, that would be where the x coordinate which would be right here, equals 1. That would be 0 radians. 0 radians. So you get 0, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 
But we kept in mind that we squared both sides here and we eliminated a domain issue there. So here's how you can check this. You can plug uh, into probably, probably the best statement to plug it into would be one minus cosine of x over sine of x equals one. This was right before you got rid of the sine of x. But you can also look at this analytically in terms of, I know that sine of x equals zero at zero. So this is straight up a place where these, where these have asymptotes. So this is definitely not going to check out. And, and you try to plug it in there and it's like, I can't divide by sine of zero because that's zero. If we check pi over two, uh, so one minus the cosine of pi over two, that would be one minus zero. Divided by sine of pi over two, that'd be one. That'd be one over one, that checks out. So pi over two is definitely a solution. The only thing that's different with three pi over two is that when you take the sine of three pi over two, it's actually below the x-axis, making that a negative one, which means the negative one, when you plug in three pi over two to check the solution, does not equal one, it equals negative one. Therefore, it is also extraneous. Pi over two is your only solution. All right, let's check nine. That was a really rich example. There was a lot of stuff that came out of that. All right, here we're dealing with tangent. And uh, hopefully it's jumping at, it's jumping right off the page or the screen, I guess, that it's a quadratic. I can instantly go to the quadratic formula. If I do this little move, call it 2w squared minus 3w minus 5. And uh, I know it's factorable because negative 10 has factors of 2 times negative 5, which add up to negative 3. So uh, if we did a little guessing and checking here, it's, it's got to be 2w times w. And it's got to be 5 times 1, but you want the 5 here, so it's not being multiplied by the 2 over here. So there's 2 times 1 and 5 times w. The bigger one needs to be negative. So that works. This gives me 2w minus 5 equals 0. Add the 5. Divide by 2. You get w is equal to 5 over 2. Over here, you get w plus 1 equals 0 minus the 1. You get w equals negative 1. These are actually tangents, though. Tangent of x equals 5 over 2. Oh, my goodness. Help me. And tangent of x equals negative 1. Now, if you recall with negative 1, that was a value on the unit circle for sure. It ended up being the 45 degree angles in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So that would be 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. This one is not on the unit circle per se. I mean, it's not one that's given to us uh, overtly. So what you have to do is go to your calculator and do tan inverse of 5 halves. Make sure you're in radian mode, which I am. I get 1.19 radians. So keep this in mind. 1.19 radians is about right there. Tangent equals a positive in quadrant 1. 1.190 radians. But it also equals positive in quadrant 3. Yeah. So what do I got to do to get that other solution? Because my calculator is only giving me one. 
I add pi to it because it's exactly pi radians away. And there you go.